Hello and welcome to the Intos dashboard training video. The first thing you want to do to access the Intos dashboard is open up a Chrome browser, go to a tab and type in dashboard.intos.com. You'll be presented with this screen where you'll put in your work email, click next, and then go to your email client and copy a confirmation code that gets sent to you and paste it in here. Click Confirm, and assuming the system finds you in there, you will then be sent to the screen here, where, um, if you want, you can take a look at the change log to see uh, recent updates, bug fixes, um, changes, new uh, features that have been released, etc., and uh, when that happened. You're going to spend the bulk of your time in the Intos dashboard app at the My Phone screen. And in the My Phone screen, there's a lot of things that you can do. Uh, based on permission, you can configure the different extensions that you want to actually be able to monitor. They show up here. You can see in real time, for example, if, uh, if I put myself on Do Not Disturb, you can see that now Keith Home is on Do Not Disturb. You can also turn on call waiting. You can set call forwarding. You might put your cell phone in here, click activate, and now any call that comes to your extension is going to get forwarded to your cell phone. You can schedule that to be unconditional or just when your line is busy or when you're unavailable. Down at the bottom here, you see that there's an admin uh, area. That's only going to be available to those who have admin permissions in your organization. That's usually one or two people and they can configure all of these things here. That can uh, change what is available over here for other people in the organization. So if you see some things here that don't display in your instance of the dashboard, that may be because those permissions were turned off by your admin. Uh, there will be another video where we'll go into more detail about the admin area itself. What I'd like to do now is um, go back to my phone screen and actually minimize the screen. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sample call so that you can see a notification that would be coming in in the lower right hand corner. Uh, if you have the dashboard running, even in the background or minimized, it doesn't have to be on the on your main screen. Thank you for calling in. see the notification. I can click open in CRM or I can click here and it's going to open up the dashboard. I'm now on a live call and you can see that there are some other features that are now uh, available such as the ability to transfer a call using this interface to any extension in the organization or I can check the voicemail box and then check a user to send directly to voicemail or I could transfer to a conference room, or I could park the call. I could start or stop recording of this particular call. I could send this call to mobile. Basically, the way that works is you're on a call at your desk. You really need to leave the office, but you want to continue the call. You click Send to Mobile. Your cell phone rings. You answer, hang up your desk phone, and walk out of the building. I can transfer from here. I can transfer from here. And um, the parking lot... Uh, activity is shown down here below. Let me see if I can actually transfer a call from here and maybe send it over to the parking lot. Or actually uh yeah let me see if I can let me see if I can park this call. Seven one so now you can see that that call's been parked and it can be picked up by any user at their phone by pressing 7-1. That's the parking space that it's been placed in. Call could be transferred from here. Uh, or I could click the pickup button. And if I click the pickup button here, my extension is going to ring and I can answer the call right there. Let's see if we can transfer the call from here to uh, a conference room. After the tone, say your name and then press the pound key. Keith. Thank you. You are currently the only person in this conference. 
So now I've just transferred a call into the conference area. You may or may not know that conference extensions come with your solution. If you don't have any of these set up, contact our support team and we can set up one or more uh, for your organization. In this case, I'm in the Sales 7100 conference room and um, from an internal extension as part of the uh, part of your phone solution or from uh, a, um, a soft phone application, you can simply dial four digits, 7100, to join a conference. From the outside, you would dial the main number and then 7100 or get transferred into 7100. If you're a leader or a uh, uh, co-leader of a conference, you have the ability to mute all non-leaders, mute everyone, unmute, kick everyone, lock and unlock the controls. From an individual perspective, you can mute an individual person. Notice how the microphone there is shows that it's muted. Uh, you can kick somebody off or you can transfer. So again, um, easy transfer. I hit the transfer button. I get a list of options. I'm going to go ahead and park that call. Again, space 7-1 is available, so it's going to place me at 7-1. If I go back to my phone screen, I can see that that call has been parked at 7-1. Anybody in the organization can pick that call up by dialing 7-1 pressing the Park 1 parking space on their phone, if you have it configured that way, or by clicking the Pick Up button, and their phone rings, they answer, and they are now on the call. As you can see, this extension is now on that call. So there is um, a little bit of uh, call management, moving calls around, and that type of thing. Um, so now I'm going to end that call. And we're going to move on to the voicemail area. Most of you know that you get voicemail notifications in your email where you can listen to a voicemail. You can actually forward that um, to another user. But as far as managing voicemails, um, in, in my opinion, it's a lot easier to manage it from a device, uh, a, a piece of software, rather than on the physical phone. So what, what I can do here is I can actually listen to the message, I can save a message, move it to a logical folder. I can forward the message to another user. I can download and save this message locally, or as what's going to happen with most of your voicemail messages is I can delete it by hitting the trash can and then confirming yes, and then that message would be gone. The other thing that you can do is you can actually manage settings. So I might want to... Um, come in here and record a an unavailable recording, uh, my name recording, my busy recording, or my temporary recording. What's nice about the temporary recording is once you've worked very hard to get your main recording recorded just the way you want it, it's nice to be able to record a temporary greeting that might be used for an emergency situation. Um, uh, a vacation day or a vacation week or what have you that you can record. Um, the system will tell you that you have a temporary greeting queued up and that's playing so that when you come back uh, you know that you need to change it uh, back and all you do is just disable your temporary recording and your regular recording will be available. In the reports area under call history you're going to have the uh, the ability to see your call history and uh, the activities of those particular calls. So you can see the direction of the call, who the caller was, the time of day, the duration of the call. Um, if they left a voicemail, it's going to show an envelope like here. Um, you have the ability to block uh, particular phone numbers if you get calls that you don't want to get receive calls from that number anymore. If the call's been recorded, this little microphone shows you that it's been recorded, and you can click on that and the call recording is right here. If you if your organization is recording a lot of calls and you want to see that, you need to find uh, recordings, you can search for them in this interface right here by month, day, specific number, or by extension. There's other reports that can be run here called Detail Records, Call Summary, Extension Activity, 
in another video we can go over those in more detail. Call queues is the area where your different queue agents would show up based on different areas within your phone system that have been configured. Uh, if you have questions about this or your organization isn't set up this way, you can contact our support team to find out how you can add additional users to different extensions uh, and different queues to handle your, your call traffic. In the chat area, you can simply begin a text conversation by choosing your phone number or one of the numbers that uh, you have in the system. Put in the cell number of the individual that you would like to begin uh, a text conversation with. Type in the message and click Start. Once you do that, that message is going to go out. Here's an example. Test message with Scott. He responded, got it. This, is, this historically stays here. It's not editable. It's not able to be deleted. Other folks in your organization can see this text or chat history. And the nice thing about it is, is that if you're not available and somebody references that chat conversation, you're able to uh, look at that history and confirm that something was or was not communicated there. In the facts area, uh, let's say that you want to send a fax, you'll just come to send fax. You'll choose the fax number that you want to send from, put in the recipient name, the recipient number, and choose up to three PDF files that you'd like to send as a fax. Hit send fax. It will take you to the sent screen, and you'll see a light blue box that says processing. And then uh, if it's successful, it turns green. And if it fails, it turns red and often tells you why it failed. And then you know that you need to resend it. Your received fax come in here. We do keep your fax for 180 days on inbound, and we save your faxes that are sent for 30 days. If you do need to keep any faxes for longer than that, we would encourage you to use the download button, download those faxes, and save them on a local drive. In the profile area, about the only thing that you really need to do here, and this would be the first thing that you would want to do upon initially logging into the dashboard, is put in your mobile phone number. You know, we already know your email address, your first and last name. You'll put in your mobile number, click Save Profile, and then that way, uh, when you do the um, send to mobile from the active call screen, it knows what cell phone to send it to. Well, there we go, folks. There's the um, training video for the dashboard. If you need additional information or have additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact our support team. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.